Hello everybody. I call this video the simplest irrefutable flat earth proof. Now I know there's going to be some people who will watch this who know me personally and people who know me personally uh, know that I am not a fool. I don't want to start with the premise that all flat earthers are stupid. So if you say you're not a fool, I guess we should take your word on that. Hi, I'm R. And I'm Jay. And in this video, we're going to listen to this guy provide irrefutable evidence that the earth is flat. Enjoy. I have a degree in math and I have a Juris Doctorate, and I have been practicing law for almost 30 years. It sounds like an impressive career, but none of this seems particularly relevant to a flat Earth or suggest you would be more qualified to talk about this topic than anyone else with a basic education. Maybe the math degree might be useful, but I guess we'll see. Some of these people who will watch this know that I have won some incredibly diff uh, difficult jury trials. A jury trial is not a simple thing. Many attorneys avoid them at all costs because they are so difficult and so stressful. And I have won some cases that people would think that you could never win. But I won't get into the details of those. I just want people to realize that I'm not a fool. As impressive as all of that is, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not a fool or that you can't have foolish ideas. Even Einstein was wrong at least a couple of times, and Deepak Chopra has a medical degree, but he is wrong nearly all the time. Also, convincing a jury isn't the same as presenting verifiable scientific evidence. Juries are often easily swayed by emotion and eyewitness testimony, which are notoriously unreliable, so I hope we get to see something a bit more scientific than that. When I first heard about the Flat Earth a year ago, or a little more, I totally ignored it because I thought, come on, that's foolish. Well, I guess it's only a natural response given how much clear evidence there is that the Earth is round and our understanding of physics doesn't allow for much outside of that. And that's, that's natural, that's normal. Because we've all been brainwashed by scientism. That dang scientism, creating better living standards and curing disease. Obviously, they, they all lied to us for the, um, uh, wait, why would all the scientists lie about the Earth being round? Why would thousands of people who have never met all conspire to tell us that the Earth is round if it isn't? By those priests of a new religion who believe in science, who believe that science when you understand science, it dispels all notions of a God who rules in the affairs of men and who created the earth. Well, the difference between science and religion is that science is based on the progressive testing of ideas. Every good scientist will try and disprove their own ideas because in science, being wrong about something is almost just as useful as being right. There is no authority in science which determines what is true or false. It is a free-for-all of ideas that are tested and tested again, and then tested again by people who have little or no connection with one another. To say that scientists conspire with one another or follow the same infallible ideology is just a complete misunderstanding of the scientific process. Well, I will tell you, before I met the Lord, the true God of the universe. Wait, you really met the Lord of the universe? Did you, did you get a selfie with him? Because that would be pretty awesome. Over 40 years ago, when I was a math major in college, I turned totally away from faith and I did believe that math was God. I did. Because math seems to explain everything. Well, that was a pretty stupid decision. Did you pray to math? I'm suspicious that there might be a, a pattern here. You seem to be caught up in the idea of God and are just projecting him wherever you can. But we have been deceived. And now I want to show you the simplest, irrefutable, flat earth proof. Oh, math be praised. Finally, let's hear that irrefutable proof. So let's look at the first flat earth proof. You see the globe. Now consider an airplane. Disclaimer. Objects are not to scale in this demonstration. 
Okay, this airplane is going to fly always at a level altitude with, re with respect to the Earth. And any of you who have studied the, the flat Earth ideas know that there is an equation that describes how much curvature is in the Earth from given distances, and that, and that is defined as 8 inches times the number of miles squared. Given your background in maths, it is interesting you would mention that equation. The 8 inches per square mile is an equation used in civil engineering to compensate for the general curvature of the Earth. Within a distance of 100 miles, the equation is relatively accurate. However, when you go beyond that, it becomes increasingly less accurate. That is because the equation was designed as a general rule of thumb for engineers and not intended as a method for calculating the circumference of the Earth. There is a link in the description explaining more about this equation and its limitations for anyone who's interested. So that um, if you go through that calculation, you can figure out how far below the horizon something should be from a particular distance. As long as it's within 100 miles, you can. And the idea also is that as a plane would traverse the globe, it would have to be always adjusting its nose a little bit down in order to continue at, the, at a level altitude? Well, not really. Gravity will adjust the angle for you. Only if you were to break the gravitational pull of the Earth would you have to manually adjust your trajectory like that. Now, if you consider this plane going to the east here, just going to the east, you see that the plane always seems to be level with respect to the Earth. And then, you know, if it keeps itself at a level altitude, then it would just simply land at a country on the other side of the globe. Okay. Neglecting the fact that the plane is the size of North America in this demonstration, there I don't actually see anything wrong with that. As long as you acknowledge that it's gravity keeping the plane level, not the plane constantly adjusting its angles as to avoid flying off into space. Okay. That's easy to see when you're going east and west, but what about when you're going from north to south? And this is, this is the proof. And you can't deny it. Well, I guess we'll find out shortly. So you start your journey at the Arctic, as far to the north as you can. And you begin to go south. Now notice as I'm going south, I have to continue dipping the nose of my airplane in order to stay level with the ground. Now I'm going to continue all the way to Antarctica. Now notice I'm continuing to dip my nose down to stay level with the earth. Now I'm going down into South America, continuing to dip down and finally I get down here to Antarctica. And look at that. My airplane is upside down. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Look at that. My airplane is upside down. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, this guy's great. Well, you're going to say, well, we know that people that are in the southern hemisphere are still standing right side up. <laughs> uh, there is no up or down in space. Gravity determines the direction, and since gravity is constantly pulling towards the center of the Earth, it doesn't matter where you are standing on the surface of the Earth. Regardless of where you are traveling, unless you pull away from the Earth's gravity, you will constantly remain orientated toward an upright position in relation to the Earth. If this didn't happen, a plane could simply just fly into space at any point regardless if the Earth was flat or round. Everybody stands right side up on the Earth. We know that. But yet you just flew down here. You're upside down. You cannot refute that. Your airplane is upside down and your head is facing down. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Keep the plane where it is relative to the globe and then turn the globe upside down. Is the plane still upside down? No? Congratulations. That's how gravity works. Since the globe is floating in space and there is no up or down, everything in the vicinity of the globe is orientated relative to the globe, which has a constant pull of gravity regardless if you're on the South Pole or the North. It has to be 
true because you have had to adjust your nose by a full 180 degrees so that now you are absolutely upside down. You can't deny that proof. Gravity! That's the simplest irrefutable flat earth proof. There are many, many, many proofs that we do live on a flat earth. I urge you to begin to study it. Don't mock. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, you say that, but uh, you're making it really, really hard. I'm not a fool. Well, you certainly sound like one, but if you're not a fool, then you can only be a troll, because that was easily the stupidest argument I've ever heard on any topic, ever. We know this isn't the most intellectual argument to debunk, but it sure was fun, so thanks for watching. Like this video, subscribe for regular videos, and share this video around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.